the whole concept of the workshop came about because in a lot of um, schools, and, and CCP is one of them, but a lot of high schools where the city year core workers had to work, they had positioned large urban populations. Philadelphia, most of the public schools are black, black, you know, mostly black, and then next is Latino, but you know, it's in the hood. All right, so the workshop primarily was for the core members to know how to better um, serve the kids that were from the streets or from the hood. All right, here at Community College, about nine years ago, I worked here um, at the um, CBI building. Dr. Curtis put out a campus-wide call asking for help because he wanted to understand why so many black males were dropping out, why the attrition rate was so high for black males, African-American males, right? Because, you know, the, the, they would, uh, black males would enroll, but then they would never make it you know, the same ones wouldn't make it all the way to the end. They would, for one reason or another, they would drop out of school. So he actually um, wanted to have folks investigate that. I actually um, submitted a proposal to do a symposium to address that um, toward the end. That never materialized. But what it did, the research that I came up with um, actually was spawned this workshop that I do um, about the jungle. Now, when I speak about the jungle, I, I'm sure many of you heard the, the uh, term or the cliche, uh, um, concrete jungle, or we live in a concrete jungle and people use that as a metaphor. Well, when I speak about the jungle, I'm speaking about something that's not a metaphor. I'm speaking about the actual reality. Um, the existence of where where we live, right? The concrete jungle is supposed to mean that that the, the city, the urban environment is similar to the jungle. The dangers that we encounter in the streets in an urban environment are very similar to dangers that you encounter amongst animals in the jungle. So that's why it became sort of like a metaphor. But, and when you really sit back and look at where we're at and, it, what it, and look at it for what it really is, you see that the jungle is just that. You have uh, road, roads that have been paved on the, throughout the, the uh, jungle, buildings have been erected, but essentially it's still a jungle. Now, why do I say that? Because you have the same dangers there and they're just different. So essentially, it's like buildings have been placed in the midst of the wilderness, but animals are still eating. Because what are we if we're not animals? Right? We're just a higher form of animal. Uh, interesting, this morning on the news as I was uh, preparing to leave, there, and that's one of the to show up there, but I was going to cue it up. Um, there was a, um, in California, there was a guy that was walking, he was texting. I don't know if any of you heard it on the news. He was walking, he walking down the street, he's texting, and he didn't see that maybe five feet away from him was a big grizzly bear. It was 400 pounds, and it had escaped. <laughs> so he's walking down the street, and he's, and he said he was texting his boss, and then he sort of looked up and he saw the bear, and he ran. I he just, he just darted out of there because he was scared, right? But he wasn't paying attention. Now, had that been a person that was trying to rob him, he probably wouldn't have gotten away. The bear wasn't as interested in getting him. The bear just wants something to eat and, you know, human beings are not high on the menu for bears. If it was a lion, a tiger, maybe it's different. But the fact is the bear that was in the wilderness winded up in the urban <coughs> environment in an area in close proximity to this person. Now, the problem is, is that we 
have gotten, a, we have adapted and gotten used to the notion of being safe. Right? So when we walk or move about in this jungle, because of the buildings and because of the scenery and because of the whole notion that we're safe, because we're protected, we move around sometimes as if we don't have to look out for danger. And often that's when danger gets us. That's when we got caught, we get caught up and uh, and I'm going to speak about the Trayvon Martin incident in a little bit. But before I get there, I want I want to further elaborate on this point. Danger is always present. Right? The kid, uh, what was that school where the, the guy shot up everybody Not last Bobby. week? Not Tom. Not no, just Oklahoma, last week. Oklahoma, right? Was that Oklahoma? Mm -hmm. I think that was Washington. Oklahoma. Oh, in California. Uh, yeah, it was on the West, on the West Coast. All right, and then the guy at Virginia Tech a couple of years ago, in a seemingly safe environment, college camp. Like we're in a college campus, we're in a class now, right? We assume everyone in here is safe. We we assume everyone that we're safe amongst each other. That's the assumption. But are we prepared if we're not? That's the question. All right? And when I'm talking about safety, I'm not just talking about physical safety. This safety means first protecting your mind, protecting your, your emotions, protecting your spirit, but all, and also protecting yourself physically. That's included as well. But here's the thing. We move about in this jungle feeling as if we're, we're safe, and that's usually when we end up in situations that are very dangerous and sometimes we don't, we don't survive because we don't realize at all times that we are still in a jungle. It's just different. Now, I have a question that I ask everyone when I do this workshop. What is the most dangerous animal in a jungle? Thank you, Rhonda. Yeah. Man. Man, right? Now, I've, I've asked that to a group of students, and I got lions, I got tigers, and I got bears. And I asked them, well, where are they? If they're the baddest in the jungle, then why aren't they walking down the street? And why are we hiding behind trees when we see them? Right? It's because they're scared of us except for when we're walking and preoccupied with a text, <laughs> you know, with the text that we make. But for the most part, they are afraid of us. Why? Because we are intelligent enough to have learned how to create guns and bombs and blow them up or set traps to put them in zoos or wherever, or in a circus. But the point, or if we're hungry enough to eat them, right? So uh, when we think in terms of, of animals because we detect, we disconnect ourselves from the animals. We're not that. Then we sort of create an illusion for ourselves. And when we get into in situations in school, on the job, even in personal relationships, and we interact with each other as if we're not animals. But it's a game that we sometimes play on ourselves. And it's not always a conscious one, because we were raised and groomed to believe that. Has anyone in here ever studied martial arts or fighting? When we, what, what, what um, art form? Uh, Slippers with jiu-jitsu and oh, You stay back there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then you probably understand. I know in most art forms, the first thing they do is get you in tune with your own inner animal, your inner beast. I mean, I know beast is like sort of has nothing, but you understand your instinct, your, your instincts right. to adjust and adapt to a situation. Because as humans, sometimes we get disconnected because we grew up in schools and we're culture, right? Now, and what we call the streets, and this is, this is the other, and this is where the workshop really you know, Kent was the main inspiration. When you're in the streets, we have instincts 
to survival, but it's still kind of uh, uh, based off of um, a false sense of how can I, it's a false sense or a notion of where of what our existence actually is. For instance, the streets are paved roads. All right. The ghetto, what we call the ghetto, the hood, or the urban environment, and, or poor uh, urban environments, you have a, a lot of people live in one concentrated area, and a lot of the way that the streets are actually physically designed is very similar to a maze. I drive through North Philly and West Philly sometimes. If I don't know the street, I turn up one street, that's one way, and the next one, you make a left, and then you got, if you want to, you got to make another left to go back, and if I'm trying to go this way, I, I have to, it's like I'm going through an actual maze. I'm turning and, and so I'm sort of like stuck. But even the way it's designed sort of puts you in that, in that mindset. But because a lot of people, a lot of young black males in particular that I hear over the last 20 something odd years speak about the streets and I'm an, you know, I hear them proudly say I'm from the streets and you know, in the streets, this is this is how it go down. But they speak proudly about being from the streets as if there's a badge, right? <laughs> but what I tell them is, if you really understand where you're at, if you have those instincts, why are so many brothers locked up? Why are so many black males in jail? Disproportionately. That's something to make you stop and question. What I, from what I've gathered, it's because they understand the streets but don't understand the jungle. Okay? The jungle is this big world we live in. Streets are like a